There you go. Right. Five, four. Whoa, three, two, one. I like that noise it first makes. By the way, no vibration. Very, very well balanced fan. This, the Cortina one tends to shake and make that noise, which I don't like. Here we go. <laughs> Powerhouse! down let's have a look this will show you the infill material and where we're up to we've got ourselves a very nice dashboard let's come around and have a look all wired in all tested we've got fog lights we've got fog light indicator on there we've got radios we've got wood we've got chrome we've got all sorts so the dash is ready for its final systems test just this heated seat loom to fit there it is not much to the heated seat loom but everything's in, all the trim pieces are in, and we're just doing some final testing on what we've been installing all this time. We've been on it two months, the dash, a lot of work gone into that to get it like this. Stand on the chair and give you a high up view. So this episode will, will rewind in time. This is the sort of introduction to it, and it'll show you how we got to this stage. Uh, we've done wiper motors. We've done heater blower motors, you just saw that. We've done um, a heater box rebuild, that's all included in this fun episode. Because it's not as tech based, it's more back onto the car. We don't call them tech vids now. We we waited till we got all electronics out of, way, out of the way and called those the tech vids. And when it started to get into stuff like wiper motors, heater blower motors and things like that, that's all good bread and butter material for episode 34 so welcome aboard and then step back on your little time machine now as we pile all the clips together and I edit the video up and we'll have a line of parts indeed the parts that you're about to see are all nicely stored away in the outgoing department there wrapped that final job being that heater diver box which come out good so they all ended up there there's the completed heater box look it's got those uh, holding clips on it now so it's slightly different we'll fit the fan into it before I close this episode we'll test the fan in that so let's jump back to the fan and where we were and you'll see in fact actually you know because of the way the, ed the film's edited you've probably already seen the fan or you're about to see it uh, towards the end of this film so you're going to jump back in time the fan's actually done it's in a test box there you'll see how we got to that position okay so jump aboard it's episode 34 welcome and thanks for the recent support on patreon we've had some road trip videos out to blackpool haven't we as i said plenty of tech videos went out didn't they but i couldn't push you anymore with the tech stuff a couple of people were saying, I thought this was a car restoration channel. This used to be great. Uh, where's the car? Where's the welding? No, 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 no. I finished welding the shell. No, no, no. What's all this text? Of what? Why all the wiring? I thought it was a Cortina restoration. Well, hang on a minute. Uh, uh, how do I switch my lights off? I've got to build a wiring harness to do it. You know, some crazy comments, but representing about 0.01%. It doesn't matter. And even there, even that, then were just questions. Probably didn't quite get it. Never mind. It's all right. Appreciate that. Um, I always try and take the benefit of the doubt. Uh, there is another loom to finish, and that won't be tech video. Again, that'll be included in episode 35 when we do the front loom build. 
so uh, you're out of the uh, out of the zone of tech vids now so uh, as I said rewind in time and then you'll, you'll come up to speed with that on the bench all right here we go here we go clips coming up from a few weeks ago maybe a month ago hold tight get your brew ready get your tea ready get your beer ready get your root beer ready and let's do it okay some stores have been, uh, some spares have been shipped in some are coming in some are coming out so at the moment we've got a bit of a temporary docking area here some of the recent tools so we're just going to place the recent tools over to the, the last job which was that wiper motor over there there were the tools that we were using and here's outgoing stuff to be wrapped any second now so we just did pedal box washer pump foot operated accelerator pedal and then the wiper motor you saw the glove box stuff that was comparison part so that stuff sort of gets split now repackaged we've got some bubble wrap just over there ready so we place that now next to wow you couldn't make that hook on if you try we place this to there so we know and now here it is the heater box itself out of stores and this is going to be a good time warp inspection completely untouched since the day I took it off I've no idea what to expect no idea if it can be saved because they're very fragile really fragile I mean they almost crumble in your hand so we may have to switch to a plastic box we don't want to we've managed it on Ruby without but we have got a brand new old stock plastic heater case and if we need it, it wouldn't be as good but we might have to if this is damaged there's bound to be some damage on it it's whether or not we can accept the level and whether we can open it up indeed without damaging it let's see what we can do let's get this on the bench heater box let's go well you know, as much as I do on this Rambles heater box. Careful. I'm initially looking all right. Initially looking okay. Yeah, so far. Okay, I've got a. Hey, good work. I've got some damage in that top corner. That would be hidden, hidden by a washer. And I'm looking at it initially around this troublesome area. We're okay. Some damage in the lower corner. Okay, let's get this heater motor out. This is a replacement heater motor when I was using the car and I wanted to demist the windows. The car bramble was used for ex exhibit as a barn find exhibit. Indeed, talking of barn finds, TC making his way as a barn find to the NEC. Restoration show in March. Okay, this is bonded in. I think if we push forward on this, we'll get it. Okay, stay with me, everybody. That's a plastic Mark 4 or 5. Better and better for the mod that we do. By the way, we change the motors in these. This motor's not fantastic we change the motors in these I'll talk about that later on that can go out, this, out of the way for now and now we can get evidence of the car car's life here straight away we've got something live I'm glad you was with me for this one because we've got a piece of newspaper tents and 
tents, something, light. That's all we've got. A little bit of ramble evidence, tents, something, tents to light up. But that could be anything. Wait, the rest of it's here. It's been sucked into the... Oh, yeah. Car battles and Jaguar chip. It's from when Bramble was at the NEC. It sucked it in. Oh, boo! 2016. Boo! Oh, well, never mind. I suppose it would have been a miracle for a piece of newspaper to survive inside a heater box. This wouldn't have happened, would it? Right, well, the first thing we've got to do is split the casing into two halves. <coughs> There's little tanks, little retaining clips on here which we're going to ping off. Well, unfortunately, they bond the two halves together, or at least they used a, a kind of like mastic, so it was airtight, and that's the problem, trying to break that. But the top of it's okay. <coughs> here. Okay, my SD card filled up then, so I don't know how far I got. I was talking about damage there, which I can repair. There's damage down below, which is enough backing on it to put a corner piece in and repair that lower corner I'll bring it up to you so I'm going to fix that the plenum drain tube slots damaged but that's covered by the plenum drain tube so that's not too bad we're hoping we can save this box now they're bonded together and also clipped together with these clips you can prise those clips off but what happens is they'll drag marks into the fiberglass and you can risk even more damage so we're going to crock sand them off we think that will work if we're really careful. So the first thing to do, we need to separate the two halves of the box as carefully as we can. There's not much chance for mistakes. Looking at it though, overall I think we're good. Little damage in this corner. Here, just off your screen, I can make that. That's doable and repairable. So we need to do some miniature repairs on it, but this troublesome area here is, is in untouched. And you only snap there they normally snap here where these brackets are, we'll be drilling those off. So, in all, I think so far as it stands, I'm going to go ahead and salvage this box. I'm going to get the crock sander now and try and separate it. But before, before I do, stay with me. You couldn't make a cable uh, hook up onto another cable to try. I'm going to drill the brackets out first. They need drilling out and just get them off, let's get the brackets out, grabbing some various size drill bits coming back across to you on with the heater box repair, light going over just to give you that little bit extra support, light just in the corner there, take it off your screen, let's do this, okay drill coming in, charged up and ready to go, let's just see, take these rivets out, Take them out.
to on the little flat bracket. in good order. from the inside I'll try to get them as much off as I can there when I take these out we're going to need the crock sander to take those out I don't even want to try and prise those clips up at the top Are you okay to stay with me I'm going to duck down just in front of your screen hopefully you've got enough light okay let's see Pretty tough metal, don't like it, could easily mark the top lip edge, could make it worse than what we're trying to cure. Pick time, let's see what they'll, if they'll go with a pick, it may do, maybe better with a pick on these, perhaps it's a bit ambitious, but I know that if I try and lever or pull anything now, these will just go and you're gone. I just don't think, even with this. Oh, it is tight. You can just hook it over. You can't even you can't even do any leverage action or anything like that. There's just no room to do it. Nothing can you do. Just try and wreck it. That one went okay. Looks like these are playing so far. Okay, might be okay without the crocky. You can get in at the back and pull back. But I'm telling you, you've got no you've got no margin for error at all. Absolutely not. It is just not forgiving. Again, patience needed. There's that magic word, patience. Always required in a car restoration, no matter what you do. essential for this then everyone careful I 
hear that, it's starting that doesn't like it. Still okay so far. stuck to it and a little piece of the lip goes we lose a piece there it is look at that powder it's a joke it really is this is what I'm saying and that's like swelled up there Not too bad in other areas we lose a little piece there, don't even think you can glue that back in. We might be able to shape some of it in with pedanki. It's possible, so we have to repair that piece. Let's see what this one does. Towel going to be going down in a sec. I don't think there's any more. Oops, I lost the drill bits. Now I've got to separate it. That's the hard part. We're going to break this into two sections without snapping it. I can't remember how I did this. I've done this once. Heat, possibly. Heat first, and let's just see. That could be a solvent.
I'm going to keep on going around this and uh, slowly and as the moment of truth comes I'll put you back on because it's going to be quite time consuming there just going around but it is starting to separate out whether it'll continue that I don't know but it is starting to go let's see what happens with a little bit more heat and then just see if not we'll start soaking it in some kind of uh, stripped down material possibly thinners let's see I'm trying to get these two halves together without breaking it okay just so you know what's going on now poured some thinners into it but this was already on here this hasn't happened now there was already a crack fracture in it you can see where this has expanded out and some corrosion around them rivets and the rivets have blown and they've sort of tensioned this up and created a crack and as I'm trying to do this the cracks are enlarging so we've got damage in that corner although the thinners is starting to break down the the red sealant that they've used let's turn it into jelly so that's going to help us a little bit of heat a little bit of thinners swished around carefully so that's where we're at I'm going to carry on going see what we can do okay some good news we're starting to budge the thinners has done its job and melted completely annihilated the sealant so look we're starting to go can you see that starting to split with so far no damage so the sealant has done its job the, the thinners has done its job at least on the top it's a bit, bit stubborn on the bottom but on the top we've gone all right so far I'm just making sure that there isn't anything actually physically attaching it inside I think there is we can maybe put more thinners in this corner now and work it a bit more and get it to go that's what we're going to do we're going to we're going to try and persuade this corner this is what I'm talking about here you can't put any it has to be just completely almost neutral force I'm listening now as well I'm trying to get an idea where it's stuck more thinners is what we're going to do this, this lower corner here so damage wise no new damage some some revealed damage in that corner where the rivets have blown it we're broken away at the bottom there's only this back lip now holding us and that's the place that had the least thinners so we're gonna fix that up now off screen for you washing into there nicely let's get that to slurp in and out okay we would not have done this without thinners I heard it go now for the moment of truth we know that we've got that corner damage but it's straight off in virtually one piece now as a side note you can get make a hybrid and you can put a plastic backing onto a fiberglass front so if this was to be heavily damaged actually wouldn't have been a, uh, wouldn't have been the end of the road there's the red sealant you can see it look how the thinners has destroyed it so if this is how you're doing it this is what you've got to do it's just that saved us forget anything else the heat no it's the thinners that saved us there to able to enable us to split this heater box down now very carefully and place this to one side let's have a look at the rest of the box the backing plates not as important as the front of the box we're looking all right so we can make repairs in these corners so far we are in still in the game some spaces we mustn't forget about these we're going to have to make new ones out of bits of tube there's a flap to remove and a sh inner chassis to remove that's what was causing the problems in this corner luckily the damage in this corner isn't visible although it needs to be sealed for an airtight seal so on the whole as it stands actually when I said about the plenum damage it isn't damage on the front face piece it's only on the back face piece that's shaped as it should be so actually that's good news there less damage than we thought or can we see a crack coming in here an aging crack there coming in but still not developed into a big situation just 
looking at the back face plate, it's only this corner really, bring you across a bit so you can see, only this corner really that's the big deal, and even that's not that bad. So, so far we are still in the picture, we need to remove the inside pieces now, carefully. We've got some blown rivets here, we want to get this diverting chamber out, but we don't want to cause damage. We're even more fragile now, we haven't got the backing piece on. Those rivets have proven to be tricky. We may well want to attack them from the inside. Even lowering it on that edge is dangerous. The whole thing is just dangerous. We'd like to replicate it in fiberglass. It could be prudent to take this in to somewhere now and ask them, can you make this whilst I've got a good shape for them to copy? We'll see. I'm going to carry on with a little bit of internal removals for you now, but uh, success so far, heater box stage one, we got there. Okay, blade down this side. Because this internal divider is glued in as well, so we're just going with the blade both sides. The rivets have gone, so we're going to try and rock this out. Even this is bonded in, everything's, everything's stuck. This the forces vertically are better than laterally. And they seem to be still stuck. I was stuck on the little operating pin. It's going to have to come out sideways, which involves flexing the case. This could be hard. gone now, another piece gone. This is what I mean. This area is particularly vulnerable and this pin is holding us up there. Stuck on that and then this this is gone. So there's another piece gone. Luckily again on the bottom, but even so, we'll just try and get enough flex to get that clear without the whole thing cracking. bomb disposal. That's it. Wow. Okay. So we just lost a piece here. I'm going to instantly glue that back in now. So it's out of the way. And we can see whether or not Loctite super glue can help us with any chip repairs that we encounter along the along the journey. It'll be interesting to see if this stuff can actually have a decent grab. I think that it will do because it's kind of like fibery. It's horrible material to work with. Nasty stuff. But so, I was going to say we can put that back in. We didn't fall out. We need to find a glue that is going to help us. Which way around over this way? Looks like this glue won't do it. It's exactly back where it was. To a degree, we'll be able to shape pieces if not too much has gone. I mean, it's a a load of rubbish really isn't it? let's face it, it's garbage this, absolute garbage. But you've got to work with what you got. And it, they do look the part when they're done. Simply because of the finish. You don't get that on the plastic boxes. Now the super glue does take, so we can put any little mini chips that we create along the way, we can super glue in and we've got scrap boxes where we can hopefully find and graft in pieces and to repair. I think we can do this. For example, I might have a, 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 I've definitely got a few of these broke up where that corner may be all right, but it may have gone in another position. Indeed, this corner as well. We'll have to just see what we've got. Okay. So that piece glued back in. It looks like it takes. Yes, 
that does take so we can get away with little bits so we've managed to get it apart with only the damage in that corner and there's some damage obviously what just super glued up there you can see on the inside of it we could perhaps reinforce that now and just see if that survives the whole operation as I'll put it on this side too and see where we where we get with that. So we're going to carry on. We're obviously we've got to clean this. A lot of cleaning to be doing and again we're at risk when we're cleaning it. We're at risk most of the time until the day actually goes back into the car. We're at risk all the way through. At least it's got the plenum securing tag intact, which is incredible. They normally snap off, which is a great help. So, on the front, which is what counts the most, you actually, so far, can't really tell that there's anything wrong. Even these may be lugged out on purpose, because they're both, they're both that shape. I'm just wondering if they did it that way. The ribs are okay. The only damage you've got is that corner, which we now know we can use repair stuff for. We can make what we need for that corner. And on the front, a little bit raggy on this heater box edge. But again, that's got a sort of plate that fits around, although it doesn't go over it, I must admit. And then this back corner here, which I'm sure we can get a piece in. So as that stands, we're still all right. It's up to me now whether I damage it myself anymore. The ball is, up, the ball is in my court. The heater's given what it can to me. It would just be a case of now seeing if we can get this tidied up. Which I'm sure that we can. And if we want, we can use a plastic backing um, plate. That might be an idea. Then we've got a little hybrid. That'll give us extra strength too. So the whole thing can't just crack in half. You know, if you get a back one and get it bonded on, it's going to give us extra strength. So we might w indeed want to go and strip a plastic one and uh, retrieve its back plate and will not probably fit that so we've got yourself a hybrid which is fine because you don't see that that's probably going to be the plan a little hybrid box but I think at first I'll, I'll repair the damage in this corner that's going to be because I'm going to shape out so that I can see that's broken away too um, we have to be really careful how we do this uh, we could make a mould and then infill it with a resin then flat it back. It would get, again, that finish wouldn't matter because it's face down, you don't see it. So, you know, we need to, but we do need to make it airtight the box. Red, gluing it back together is not a problem. Once you glue this, we'll use um, Tiger Seal and it's done forever. We're never splitting this apart again. I could use the, the black putty, but the thing with, with that is it's, it needs a lot of force to compress it, like that mastic putty. Whereas Tiger Seal will, will go as thin as we need. And um, you could use the putty if you were ever going to split this apart again. It's never coming apart again. That's the end. I'll be well back dead and buried. I'm finished. No chance. This is not coming apart and I don't care. It doesn't need to. So along there, it's all expanded. You can see the old corrosion. You can see it's all ch gone chalky where the rivets have blown out over the years. And then that's just sort of started to crumble away. Here we've just super glued it on, so we should be back in the game. A couple of chips, but on the whole, on the whole, by the time this is put back together, provided that I don't do any more damage to it, we're going to get away with it. I'm going to call it a day now. I'm going out for something to eat. It's been a good working day. We'll carry on tomorrow. See you in a sec. Okay, how about I take a little trip to stores and pull out every heater box I can get my hands on, including this rare beast now. Sit back and have a little quick look at this one. A non heater, just a cold air box, um, would have been probably on an export car in a hot climate. Blanked off, um, no, no heater matrix, blanked off heater matrix plate, and no internal flap to divert the air, just set on cold air only. I don't know where we accumulated this, I think Mr. Bullen supplied it. But also, curiously, with its uh, never been on a car, with its original decal, so we can use that to make a replica. We've already got a replica similar to this, but this is um, which we estimated from a picture in a book. But this is a real deal decal label 
for us to replicate. You could argue it's for a later plastic box, but at least it gives us a starting point. Uh, stock number code there, so we'll be copying all those. But this, some damage to it. Uh, that corner broke away, just like our fiberglass one on Brambles broke away. So is this corner a vulnerable point. We've drilled the rivets out of this because it's going to donate. You can see inside it doesn't have the diverter flap. And um, there's a plastic box, stronger, better, Mark 4 and 5, but differently designed without metal brackets here. So we're going to use the backing plate off this. And indeed, here it is. Another box we found over here. This one's almost as good as Bramble's. Don't know where that came from, but we'll just be repackaging that and not touching. It's too good, that'll go again. That takes us across here to where I'm up to now, cleaning up the uh, stripped down Bramble box. You can see the damage there. We super glued that back on. Some damage in that corner, excuse me, and some damage in this corner, but we're going to start making repair sections and fixing this up. There's not a lot to do, it's not as bad as it looks. Started initially cleaning it down. Here's the plastic backing plate then everybody and it'll give us a firm base and it fits straight on. A lovely fit. And uh, you can't tell that that's on because it just forms the back of the box and you get a nice complete solid lip at the top which isn't going to break away when we put the fastening clips on. So this gets us out of jail. Okay, and I can accept that. There's, uh, I think I've put away Bramble's original fiber box, but it just gives us a great strong shape to make the repairs. And indeed, if you look in this corner, that's broke away, but when it sits on here, it gives us a perfect patch to do a little fiber infill repair. And we should get away with everything, okay? So that's to one side just for now. A little bit close up for you. Um, very carefully moving it around. Here we need a corner, so we're gonna we've got some aluminium. We're just gonna we're gonna um, epoxy that on. Now we're okay with a, a difference in thickness here because this has a quite a thick foam sponge gasket. So by laying this on to repair the corner, um, we actually gain we actually gain. Well, we're talking, we don't gain we'll gain strength, but we won't lose any height because there's a little recess here. You can see, and I've cut that just to sit within it. The gasket sits on anyway and takes up any, any difference in height. Now I could have done a continuous cut of square but it stops here so I'd have had metal cut and broken. We're already okay there. We're going to put a piece in this corner. So I'm going to do two, two repair patches. I'm not going to cut a square all the way round. I don't think that it's necessary for what we're going to do. So this will go in and bond on. Then when I flip it over I'll be able to fill, just basically land some repair fibers on top of this then sculpt it into shape and that should repair the corner and then here we'll cut a little square infill piece and, and attach that from the inside checking that it clears the internal flap and that will bond from the inside then again we'll fill on top and then we've repaired that area and we might do a little strengthening pad there then once we've done that very careful now with this I keep saying that don't I a little crack there you can see that but it's still pretty solid there I've cleaned just a little patch out to test how the satin paint adheres to the material and this has been uh, cleaned with thinners and a rag and it, it sticks but it's perfect so that's the kind of finish you can get that's a little test patch a little bit of rust patches to clear there so we're going to put this little corner in here and make a repair. With the corner piece of alley trim bonded on, and it does seem to bond quite well, I've tried on a piece of scrap fiberglass and it rips the fiberglass away with it, so it's a good bond. We keyed it a little bit. So we can flip the box up, that's what we've done. Just flip that corner back up and put it on some chocks. And now a bit more resin gets mixed and we start to build up this little layer here slightly proud and then we can sand back gently and then once this gets painted that will disappear off and you've got yourself a repaired corner pretty tough repair as well and also as I said because it's sat on that gasket the increased height added by the, the aluminium won't get it won't make any effect to it so it'll pass a visual test with some brackets to fit here that's the mounting brackets they have a reinforcing 
metal bracket on the inside which we had galved will fit them after we've painted the inside because we're going to refurb the inside as well they don't fit a reinforcing bracket for the heater hose connector at the top so we'll make our own and fit that that's why the rivets rip out of these quite a lot on your top heater hose support this is where it guides the heater hose if I recall rightly a, six, uh, a Kent engine uses a bracket in a different position on the heater box than for a Pinto so we're going to have to refer to some diagrams because if I recall you can have two I mean all my cars have got two brackets on and the hose comes around and, and threads through them both but I seem to recall that you only need one this heater box has only got mounting holes for one bracket this is Bramble's heater box I seem to recall there's another bracket up there I'm gonna to have to go and refresh my memory um, just to see how many heater hose joins we're gonna put on this they did away with them on the plastic uh, models so we'll just check that but we need to fit a reinforcer on there and we need to look at some diagrams of two litre engines or any overhead cam engine as opposed to the the hose connector for a Kent engine in the engine bay so obviously depending on the type of engine the heater box varied very slightly there is a little clip which goes here which is for a cable but it's never used and I've never actually known what that cable is for uh, every single picture of every core scene I've ever seen does not show that getting used we'd love to know what it is there's the clip there we're going to fit it back anyway it's in some hydrogen peroxide which just helps try and get it back a little bit whiter with a bit of hydrogen peroxide and a bit of UV light just sometimes can whiten a plastic back up doesn't always work they're a bit yellowed those don't think you can get them although I haven't looked extensively but um, anyway that just clips in it doesn't actually have any bracket on the inside so a reinforcing bracket determine how many heater hose top clamps we're going to have clean the inside of the box and get it ready and paint the inside of the box and fit the internal diver flap here's the what it was like a bit grubby once cleaning up but that fits inside the box and that is your hot air controller that lets air flow over the matrix and out into the uh, duct in here there's two ducts on these we'll talk about how it works we have covered this on project ruby quite extensively a heater box rebuild but I don't mind going through it again this is starting to gel now so we can just add a little bit more uh, obviously a bit of meniscus going on a bit of surface tension whatever it's and it's kept itself from falling off the edge of the bracket so that's helped us we can build this up a little bit more to add as I'm talking it's starting to gel now in fact that's gone so we need to do another mix so four five minutes and you're gelling up great for little mini repairs again using the speed epoxy here could use fiberglass repair stuff but this works great for small localized repairs like what we're doing here if it was a larger area we'd be getting down to the fiberglass repair shop and buying some kits indeed I've got some UPOL over here glass fiber repair paste we'll have a look at that I might have its use as well we'll just see all sorts of options around for us working on the floor simply because it's a bit messy I'll take it back up to the bench when we're nearer the time so handheld no tripod just yet I'm just going in working as I go so plenty to do we'll keep on adding some uh, epoxy to that, that uh, level here is just where we want where we can sand back it's sandable the epoxy so that's great let's get on and get that corner out of the way and done can move on to the other areas heater box repair okay we've got another repair piece going in a little sandwich plate little aluminium plate I'm just gonna exactly profile it to the front face of this it's sort of just rough cut and we're gonna we're gonna crock sand it in but it's bonded into the other side and then we've G-clamped, C-clamped it up you can see that little crack there so we're going to crack sand away that crack and then just lay some more resin into that and that's the bottom of that repaired now I've checked the clearance, here's the closing plate or one of the closing plates it does fit snug with the alley, it was loose without it so it's actually brought it in to a bit better spec I know that the one I've got is powder coated and we may struggle a little bit but I can sand a little bit off the face of that alley we needed it to make a brace repair 
we didn't want this crack to continue so once that's set I can remove that clamp and just sand in a little bit so you can see where we're at stepping back again upside down at the moment backing plate serves as a great way to protect it as we're working on it as well and look here in this corner you can see now where we can infill with the resin there and use the, the plastic backer as a shape forming we basically literally just fill it full of resin and then it's uh, we can just sand it in and that repair is done because once this is all bonded together it's never coming apart so that can just be infilled with the resin It'll take a fair bit to fill that in but we can do it we could use Padanki but that's expensive and uh, we've got plenty of resin left so we're going to use that because it's sandable so we'll infill the resin we could use that fiber fill stuff we've got over there the upol glass fiber repair paste we could put that in and then over resin it to save wasting resin so we'll see with the upol stuff now the, this uh, backing plate is how you designate whether you should have the plenum drain tube they got rid of the plenum drain tube after about mid 71 when they started blocking up with leaves later fans come without it curiously they left the retaining tab in for it in fact well the retaining tab's on because brambles had the plenum drain tube so it hadn't been discontinued at that point although some cars of that year did didn't have it so it was around that crossover period again that series one and a half it's another one and a half mods so to explain what I mean we're upside down we'd have to flip round but if you can imagine uh, water gets trapped inside here or it can do it's got the potential to bring in moisture condensation perhaps or just water can somehow get in because this is drawing air from the bulkhead scuttle intake and then to drain it out uh, it would uh, go through this little hole but also water comes down your inner scuttle and they wanted to guide the water out onto the inner wing um, but then this, because the guide tube as the guide tube comes here and it, the water this is upside down let me flip it I can flip it risking it like but the, there's the fan this was the right way up now okay so that that uh, little oval right in the middle of your screen that's where the plenum drain tube would have attached it's it would have a normal sort of an, a little more of an imprint uh, another molding there on that backing plate the plastic backing plate doesn't have it showing that it doesn't have a drain tube and it just discontinued it and the water just dribbles down the inner wing it's strange early cars have a little c-shape there the plenum tube then engages with this tab here we'll show it you later on and the water's diverted neatly away down and onto the floor of the car but i think they got blocked up and caused all sorts of problems so they discontinued them i think that's why okay but we'll show it you we're fitting it because we won't be getting blocked up with leaves so we'll show you later on the repairs going very well gives us a little time well some resins uh, cure here eh? gives us a little time to start cleaning the inside of the box some reinforcing plates have gone on I've sussed out where the brackets go this Peter does have two mount brackets and before the servo hose routing across from the, the brake master cylinder servo um, you know the brake area for where the servo is across to the inlet manifold and the pipe the servo pipe roots across and clips to this heater box and it has two clips here's one of them the other one's missing it doesn't matter because we had an advanced set you can see this one's quite corroded but that will repair and you can see some of the yellow paint indeed from Bramble's engine bay spray job of yellow orangey paint we had some already in stock which are now nicely plated this supports the servo pipe on its route on cars with non servo brackets use a different shape brackets also fitted on overhead valve engines for the heater hose but on a pinto engine the heater hose clips on a different route and doesn't touch the heater box on some overhead valve engine arrangements they use one of those brackets there to support a heater hose and that's uh, 
why sometimes you'll see them with different brackets and sometimes in different positions on the the box this box is made by a company called Dell and Air and they took on jobs for car manufacturers aircon and uh, car interior heating systems Dell and Air I think made motors and uh, evac stuff aircon stuff all sorts for the automotive industry and they were based I think in South Wales initially I don't know if it's still in business I think they got bought out so Dell and Air bought out but they made this fibre box curiously in the 71 part code book it doesn't show the same moulding as all the ones I've seen here it actually shows the plastic moulding yet the plastic moulding was not introduced at that time so it's possible that they designed that moulding and then that design went into the parts book but when the reality came to manufacture it they um, did, made it slightly differently and then eventually went back to the original plan I think that's the only possible explanation really of that yeah so the book shows that mark 4 or 5 plastic heater box type design because the brackets the mounting brackets that hold it into the bulkhead are molded into the plastic on the later heater boxes on these they have a separate steel bracket riveted on and indeed we've got to put reinforcing plates that they do have the reinforcing plate inside here for the rivets to, to bind to to lock on to we've had them plated so we'll be fitting them in here we'll paint the inside of this I'm just trying to get the last of the dirt out it's torque and clean at the same time you can see my support brackets there they're just to stop the rivets ripping out for those vacuum hose support cradles these so it's all going rather swimmingly really can give this a wipe down it doesn't have to be immaculately clean but I'm sure that this foam cleaner is going to bring this up to what we need and then we'll do we'll run the thinners on it and that will just key it ready for the satin black interior finish yes you don't really need to paint the inside but what you do is here's something for you when you get the combination of all these things coming together in other words cleaning this rebuilding this repainting the inside of it in combination with new hoses new trim new chrome parts in particular reference to the interior parts so trim carpet dash paint stuff like that when all those elements combine you get that new car smell because I'll put the heater on and you'll get a kind of smell of new refurbished parts and in this case it will be the sort of satin black paint I suppose and the cleanliness of the interior of the heater the air will carry through via the fresh air vents into the cabin and the whole ambience of the car becomes more homogenous and um, more representing a, a new car smell because you've not cut any corners if I was to leave this mouldy and, and damp and that smell transmits through and you can embed the smell of your car if you want I have cherry smell in Bramble using California California scents fresheners because they're the best um, and you can put them in, inside the heat box anything you want if you want to create that new car smell we're looking cleaner now folks I'm going to just bring you slightly back how's that so prepping this we're going to flip it now and clean the other side that's that's clean enough and then we'll run some thinners in on a brush i'll just brush the thinners in then wipe it back and then that can be satin ready because we want to get the satin job out of the way this side particularly mucky all them years of grime it's the only real way you can do it you couldn't Really, you can't put this in the dishwasher. We like to put a lot of stuff in the dishwasher, but uh, 
you just got to be really careful, I'm hardly putting any pressure on this at all. We're doing good though. What we thought might have been a struggle is looking like I can see a way out of this. And it's going to be an improvement. It's a little bit more solid. Are you still with me out there in YouTube and Patreon land? 20,000 subscribers converted to 116 patrons which is similar to similar to um, Peter's channel in New Zealand he's got 20,000 subs and about 100 sub uh, patrons so it looks like if you get 20,000 subscribers you get about 100 patrons out of the 20,000 which helps to pay for the videos because it's like a lot of channels you're finding now that they're just saying if you don't get any support I can't keep doing the videos I, I don't mind doing for fun every month or so it's just when you really really want to go the extra mile and start providing sort of entertainment which I like doing I like having my own little TV channel but it's got to provide revenue because it drains me time I could be using that time for other jobs so I'm losing money if I don't get it to work which is why Patreon helps so if you can get across there um, I suggest two dollars but you can join for a dollar. Getting a bit cleaner in there now. You can just see those two aluminium rivet supports for when we put those po uh, hose support brackets on outside. We'll drill through these. These are bonded in now with the uh, epoxy. So we're as clean as we want to be. Sat in black just to tidy it up. Not essential, but as I say, going for that new car smell and all these little touches help with that no moldy no moldy heater boxes here time to get the mask I think it's getting a bit fumes doors open a little bit but still I'm gonna get the mask out but uh, yeah cleaning up there a bit more paint on and get the mask see you in a sec Okay, where well, things are beginning to take shape in the heater box. A little bit of paint on there to smarten it up. Pop a little bit more in very shortly, but we're going to get some brackets fitted now. These bonded plates, reinforced plates, are on the inside. We can drill out and we can start prepping this front because we want to get it painted before any more brackets go on. So we're going to clean and prep the front. We can sand down this corner that we've repaired because that's cured now it's not going to need much and also we can build up the flap itself once a little bit of a rub down and a clean take it across to the bench and look what we've got here a newly powder coated divert flap this fits in this housing here here's the old one we won't be using Bramble's old one these will coat them in this neoprene foam it's waterproof and that just stops the flap slamming against this making a noise it makes a sort of a nice soft cushioning sound they did fit some kind of foam on here it all dissolves away both sides by the looks of things certainly the inside but we'll, we'll coat both sides won't do any harm we've got a new bar locking bar to go on I'd say it's new it's uh, a refurbed one little spire washer at the end which we use to secure it in a little bit of a, a bending and jiggering to do well not bending but you you've got to get the spire just right and then slot this in I'll show you assembling that in a minute but it sort of like slots itself in there's a kind of glue that's dribbled all over this but I'm not going to worry myself about that too much so I've cleaned the faces so it slots in nice they're nice and smooth and we'll clean a little bit more on that flap assembly body but first I'll pop some neoprene adhesive foam on this diverter flap and get it ready to fit into this. We'll then insert that into the box, start building it all up. Heater box assembly is going good. Cut across the two of those. That size going to go for scissors for that. This will just help cushion the pads. 
sorry, help cushion the flap and seal it a little bit more. So that's for that side. I've already clean this so we can go straight on. That's straight on to there. Helps. It just gives you a bit more of a pro finish, everybody. A pro finish. This stuff sticks really good. We'll have to trim that in a little bit. But so making some nice neoprene coated flaps. This one needs a slit cutting in it and we thread it over this. So we've got to cut a slit in there now and get that over. Slit wants to be inboard just about there. So we're on the side of that. Cut the slit and in we go for that long. Now my wheel cutter. I oh, can use this blade. I use this blade. We just go in down that line it's probably just on its outer limits let's just see it should go yeah lovely just on the outside nice gasket made along there attach that a little bit, a bit more on it over we go can you see out there in YouTube and Patreon land? Thanking you, thanking you. Peter H is watching. Peter H is watching with his course there. Peter Barker. Just box. The little meat. All my Patreons. I love all the patrons. Kevin in Detroit. The Detroit crew, what's that, the Detroit Massive? Big shout out to the Detroit crew. John Bushmaster, hello John Bushmaster. Simon Carney, hello Simon. I'm going to give you a full roll call at some point. Because it won't be fair not to mention everybody. Right, so, okay. Strike a line, strike a line. Okay. Seven fifty, six hundred and a half, six hundred and a half, seven fifty mark across. Oh, go. Let's do this. Cap on, it dries out. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff this is. So nicely lined everybody. Let's get you up a little bit. I haven't been cutting you out. Sorry for that. Angle, bad angle, bad angle. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Bad person. Whoa, super sticky. Gonna get one chance to do this. Woo! <laughs> El Super Sticky-O. Just about, just about. Oh. Come on. There you go. Missed it a little bit in that corner. Never mind. That's it. On, on, and on, 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 and on. Locking bar. Locking bar. Right, we're going to get that into position now. So, pad there, aiming to get into here. So, 
to get a cushioning effect. That's lovely. I'm going to fit this now, lock that bar, we, should, we had zinc plated into there. I position this spire washer just in the right position, and you've got to push in, lock back, and then push the spire washer on. It stops it from wobbling left and right and binding. So that's just to lock the shaft. We'll do that now. Hold on, coming up. Okay, that's the flap nicely refurbed. We're operating as we should. Locking bar just there in the top. Squeezed in with these little tangs, and then we're nicely lined and ready to rock. So that can go back in the unit. There's the the pin which picks up the lever arm inside the car and alters that to divert the heat away or through the heater matrix itself. So this then slots now. There's the old one, we don't need that anymore, rusted up. This now slots again carefully. This now goes into here. Nothing to stop us putting this back. It's riveted, but we're also going to tiger flex this in so that it makes it a bit more secure. The entire structure, there's nothing to stop that. Now, look how we go there. could argue you could put a, two little bits of grease just on the pivot point if you wanted to. That is how we go. How many times do you want to operate that? <laughs> That's how it fits. Some rivets at the top line up. We're not going to put the rivets in yet because we're going to overpaint this then the rivets go in last so that it looks shiny against the contrasting finish of the box. The more quicker we can get that in, the better, just because it sturdies everything up. Just want to double check that it's clear and clearing. I can feel a little bit of resistance there, so we'll just see just a little bit of raised fiberglass that it catches on. We'll make sure that we're more than adequately clearing it. We don't want any drag. As such, that'll be the bit of the powder coat just catching. We'll sand that into suit. want it to be smooth. Okay. All the time you can actually push up with the lever arm and it'll actually push it clear. So a little bit of movement in it. When the arm fits underneath it kind of like pushes up on this and makes it go clear. It's not touching anything now. We're all right, I think we're okay. We're going to overanalyze that. All right, leave this with me a sec. Let's do a few more little bits and work out how we're going to attach this. Things are going good. I've got a, after a little bit of a mishap with a washer, I've got the, the flap in there. A little bit of grease to keep the wolf from the door. Then these reinforcing brackets on the inside, I bonded those. Just make it easier and don't fall out when I drill the rivets on going to start cleaning the front of the casing once I've bonded in with Tiger Seal this inner piece which we've just built up so that's operational it needed a washer on it to stand it off from catching I put it on the wrong end so we're on there now that's going to go in with Tiger Seal any second now really Tiger Seal in the wings over there unfortunately with Tiger Seal unless someone comes up with an idea you cannot use it um, for long before it sets in the tub very annoying because I won't be using much although I will be using it on the outside face so we're going to bond this is the heat diversion flap when that opens air can rush through the heater matrix which is just behind it close it and cold air blasts straight down the this is the fresh air vent so you can see fresh air from where my hand is is coming in into the centrifugal centrifugal fan straight down to your fresh air vents only that gives you full power to your fresh air vents begin to slowly open this reduces a bit of power to the fresh air vents but that's to divert it through another aperture here which is your um your feet and your screen demisting duct ducting so that's down to the feet and to the screen that's straight to the fresh air vents so you've got three ducts fresh air uh, face vents, not face vents, um, windscreen vents, demisters, and um, to your feet. So this 
is on the hot and cold slider which is a lower operator and it also controls the motor speed so whilst you turn your fan oh sorry it doesn't no the motor speed does another flap but um, this is your divert for the hot and cold I'm going to talk through it all before I close normally only riveted in but it'll give it a bit more strength the tricky bit will be trying to get the other side I'm sure I can do it Tiger Seal That's it for that. Right, let's see if we can get it placed in. It's going to smudge a bit, but there's not much I can do. Just want to wipe it back in a sec. In it goes. It's got to line it up with the rivets now. And then wipe back, and that's a nice box done. It's got clips as well as this, but I just want to make it strong. Away we go. Clamp that up now. But not too much force, because so we'll crack. We know how fragile it is. Just sort of feel it nipped in there. About there. Push it, keep checking it, it's all pushed in. Another clamp around this side, I think, could help. Right, I'm going to put a few more clamps on that, looking good. Okay, one of the last repairs now, a little bit of glass fibre resin, really good stuff for this kind of job. Really small microfibers, this is the U-Pol glass fibre paste, I love it. So a backing plate went in. That was clamped in position and bonded and then on top of that created a, a sort of cavity for us to lay in a nice uh, clean section of fibre fill. Alliteration on the F's there. A few little bits, minor little touches, we're just going to run epoxy into that little groove there and then that's it. And we just got a bit of sanding down, cleaning up to do. The two halves are joined together with a combination of clamps and some of the older clips. We've got new clips to go on. Not a big deal, but we're starting to take shape. I'm going to leave that overnight and let the Tiger Seal really get a good grip. And uh, we think that we're airtight everywhere, so we're good to go really. And we can always just check inside for any leaks, and we can always seal from the inside if we had to. There's still access room, but I don't think you're going to get any leaks out of this. We did a nice bead of a tiger seal ouch that was my ankle cracking because it's got about 10 plates and screws in it ouch yeah it's all sealed as well so we should be okay there's the the heater diver flap operating as it is a little bit of tiger seal just strung onto it there but we'll snap that off but we're okay we're free to move 
it's nice and uh, free to move little strands of just overhangs of tiger seal that just grab in the end of the the flap but it's not going to be a problem at all that's it for now for tonight we're going to carry on tomorrow with that okay under bright sunshine the rain clears away you may remember we did that corner repair in this fiberglass box or this fiber box just sanding it back now to make a nice strong corner there and also we've now as you saw we bonded on the plastic backing giving us plenty of strength the internal divert flap is fitted all we've got to do now is do a few more repairs down this bottom we've placed in some fiber material and just matted it back once just a rough finish taking off I've just laid a little bit of uh, fine granules stuff that I use on the um, I'm trying to think what it was off it was sort of shavings off the I'm trying to think what it is it's off the little uh, super glue kit that you get a little fine dust powder like a granulated powder using it in the um, the super glue bond in the Q bond it's the Q bond dust it gives you a little bit of a texture not quite fibers but it gives you a rough texture and we just slightly sand that but you can actually you can't even see the join the joins just by this rib so it's hit it quite well it just wants flattened back a bit and just disguising in and then you've got that also got that repair done and we don't want to lay fibers on I've, I've got some fiberglass fibers but they're a bit too coarse this is more of a smooth finish if you look so we're just going to slightly sand that back and it just leaves a bit of a texture it's not a totally invisible seal but i think it is pretty good if you look at that i can't see the join straight away if you start picking and looking deep you're going to see that it's had a repair on it perhaps but with a bit more paint and a little, little bit of a, a scuff up i think we'll get away with also that join there in that corner so that's really concludes it the flaps activating as it should nice and easy to move there it is it moves under its own if you just tilt the box up and down that falls open and close under gravity showing that there's no resistance on it so that's good all we've got to do now is clean the casing stepping back for you to give you a better view of course always clean the casing down a little bit of thinners and just a little very uh, light scotch pad on it now using the gray scotch pad and then a little bit more fine tuning just down there but what I found is the boxes are never like a firm clean pressing anyway uh, they're always a sort of rough out of the mold they were never an exact science okay so we don't have to worry about it too much luckily the bulk of it the most high visible parts of the box didn't have any damage on them anyway now let's talk about the plenum drain because we like to talk plenum drains on this channel I've made the plenum drain receiving um, bracket and I've also fiber blended that in that's a piece of aluminium bonded with the the two-pack adhesive that's the uh, speed epoxy rock solid that's going nowhere that's the plenum guide <coughs> sleeve and the plenum tube comes into my left hand right now trying to keep you steady as best that I can plenum tube then presented here there's the plenum uh, tab and securing tab this uh, slots on like this and down we go to engage with that receptacle at the end fits in very nicely there's the plenum fitted what's the plenum drain if you don't know and if you have not um, picked up any of my explanations of it there it is fitted it's on a black chair let's move the assembly onto the bench just to give you a better contrast because you're looking against the background of the black chair carefully grabbing the heater box over to the bench place it just on the edge as carefully as we can then step back so you can see a little bit better the plenum drain situation it was discontinued I mentioned this just earlier on leaves tended to block it up I think that's what it was but what it does is the bulkhead is just behind the car scuttle if you will and your wipers are just here there is your scuttle air intake using the edge of my hand to demonstrate it water goes down and eventually finds its way out through the plenum into the engine bay of the car going through this tube and dripping down the inner wing onto the floor for some reason they stopped fitting them don't know why we think it was because they blocked as I said but it picks up the little channel that's on the lower part of your, your uh, inner bulkhead there where this sits and the water this tube 
bucked up against it and the water bridges the gap. You'd think it'd have some kind of foam seal to make a watertight seal against there because you know what water's like, if you can find a way through it will. They might have done that, there might have been a seal that fitted at the end of the tube. So if I flip it on its back, we'll show you what we mean. Here, the way that the heater box fits, I mean, it does have a foam seal at the back, so it could be that the foam seal does the work, but it's got a bridge across into this tube. But that's how it fitted, and then it got rid of it halfway through the first year of production of the car. But when they did do that, they left on for the early heater boxes, you'd get a heater box that had that shape in it there. Then later on that shape didn't even exist, although curiously the scallop for it was always there, it's just that they didn't have this raised portion and then the heater boxes were made all the way up till they finished production of the car with that scallop shape out but no receptacle for it to lock onto. Brambles had that receptacle and over we go to it just here to show it, it's marked with some pen there because I used that as a template to make my own and there it is, that's, so that's your plenum drain tube receptacle on the backing plate of the heater box looking from the back <clears throat> you can see how the water finds its way into that just from that seal, so that would be how it worked so we rip, we rep a whoa! this is what I'm talking about we replicated that <clears throat> and we fitted it to the box. Um, if you look at, have we got any other backing? Yes, we have, just over. It's getting a little bit <clears throat> disorganized for my liking over here. Here's one without it. So the fiber box without, or is it? No, this has got it as well. It's just that it's broken away. There it is. So that fiber box has also got the plenum drain receptacle. Plastic boxes certainly don't have it. We've only got one plastic backing piece and that's on the heater box now so we can't show you another one but <clears throat> you'll get the idea. So that's the plenum drain tube. It's going to look nice. Here then some fibre went in for that corner, bonded down the edge there, solid, nice and solid. There's that reinforcing plate, we'll be leaving that on. Ready to receive some paint this really now. There's our plastic backing piece nicely bonded in <clears throat> so we're getting strength into this all the time let's put it back on the chair all I've got to do now is just scotch that up and I'm going to paint that up in satin <clears throat> and then we're going to fit these brackets that hold it into the engine bay itself and then the hose support brackets will be fitting those here are the hose support brackets so they're ready to go on with, with appropriate rivets once we've painted so I'll get there, all those fitted now and that's the bulk of the heater box job done. We only then have to do the heater motor itself. And we're upgrading the heater motor. Here's the heater motor over here. They're not bad as they are, but they're not a very beefy motor. And indeed, on South African vehicles, you'll notice if you have a look at a South African engine bay that they have a bigger motor sticking right out into the bay, probably to give you a blast of fresh air a lot quicker. But that fits in there, a centrifugal or squirrel cage type fan working on there, blowing the air through. We use a bigger motor, uh, it's off a, a, a Toyota Yaris would you believe, and we cut a circular hole here and the, the bigger motor protrudes out just slightly but it does look quite factory. It's, it's on Ruby, fitted and running and it kind of like gives you another third of power. There is a maximum capacity that you reach, this will be to do with uh, physics now and the dynamics of things whereby <clears throat> there'll be a max speed no matter how powerful you make that you reach a maximum intake a maximum velocity, a maximum CFM a maximum amount of air that can be moved no matter how fast you go because you need to up the size, the diameter of the squirrel cage hamster wheel or centrifugal fan, how are you going to call it but we, we, we're we just running under that with these type motors and they're not the most powerful motors and they're not the best made motors, the bearings, the shafts, the brushes and stuff on them are a little bit lazy and they can kind of like make an annoying noise as well I found with the Yaris motor it's a lot quieter although it does have an increase in volume but in terms of the rush of air type increase in volume as opposed to a, a sort of motor struggling to push out air so you get a much more of a rushing sound 
and you don't get that electrical droning noise that these ones make it's more of a powerful rush if you think of your your car that your modern car that you may have now put your blower on max and you get that rush noise of air that's what happens when you upgrade that as long as all our seals are good and we'll make sure that they are you get that a good blast of fresh air through the vents and indeed through the ducts to your feet and to the screens it's a great improvement and it brings the heater up to well as good as a modern car when I put my fresh air vents on in Ruby and close the other vents down you do get a nice blast coming through the best that you can do I think there are some inherent constraints in the system in terms of the ducting tubes are flattened as opposed to being circular and that does restrict the air the way the air can move around a, a circular tube is always better than a collapsed one again to do with physics but the best that we can get if we upgrade the motor we will also improve the wiring on it a slightly thicker cable will run through this and we've indeed made thicker cables to the switch uh, on the slider control so that's picking up a bit more juice so that's what we do to increase the the blower in these and if everything's sealed in we should be good so scotch pad then some brackets to fit a bit of satin black paint to go on and you're good to go okay let's dust this in let's clean back it's scotch back scotch pad is back let's see what we get satin then for this plenty of shakes it should bring us up to spec we should be back in the game a repair heater box then coming and taking shape right before your eyes what could have been left for dead could now turn out to be something special I'm just manoeuvring myself behind the tripod a little bit of a squeeze there a bit more I don't want to I buckle my shoe I hope you're finding this interesting at home YouTubers and Patreons alike Patreons of course keeping the show on the road it's uh, one of those you can just spray liberally you know you worry about that it's not even one where you get worry about getting any paint runs it's just so matte and fibery that this does the job just sat in black let that uh, dry off for a bit and it took shape before your very eyes I'm gonna get some brackets on this now and finish this job there's some little metal clips that clip over the edge whilst they're not needed we're putting them on just so it looks factory because it's bonded now although what they would have done is they would have put the bonding on and the clips would have held it together while the bonding was off then bonding was going off then it just left the clips on there was a little metal slidey clips here but we've, we've ordered some from bresco.com if you need clips trips solo backwards if you need clips trims fixings fastenings securings bresco.com b r e s c o dot com ask for howard the nicest man in the world go online look at all the clips and uh, things and you can find all sorts bresco not just for ford for every car leave this with me we'll be right back <coughs> excuse me okay i'm just gonna age it in a little bit just just lock that paint in just sort of i just don't want it too too new i just want to age it in i'll just from helping the paint i want it to sort of almost patch a little bit just so it's not as uniform and you can kind of just slightly deform the paint a little you just hold the heat in this one place be very careful but you can just get it to slightly wrinkle a little bit just so it's not as flat
Okay, heat of refurb is going good. We're now putting on the galvanized vacuum hose support brackets and the actual mount brackets for the uh, unit to go into the bulkhead. It's painted. We've got two guide eyelets at the top in galve that we're done. They've inserted in a little bit of Sikaflex just to hold them in place. And also they'll be able to move a little bit as the bolt tightens up. So we've got one back hose bracket on. Here's the second back hose bracket. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fit the lower ones just to get us out, out and about because then it's going to keep it just off the ground. So these we're going to lay it on its back. These should go through. Get our rivets. I've gone for slightly larger head rivets to just give it a bit more strength. Ford used some quite small head rivets. We're just going to check that, that is the right bracket by getting the other heater. We don't want to be drilling these off. Let's just see. We want to make sure I'm just checking off screen. Yep, that's right for there. Just using this as reference for a second. This goes in. We're already lined up with the internal bracket so we can go straight on here. It's not a problem at all. It looks like all rivets are lining up. Just wanted to make sure that we just leave them in. I'm not going to use any large rivet gun. This one will suffice for these. Click coming up any second now. Boom! Whoa! <laughs> hitting that with some, any recoil, minimal recoil, recoil, as I say slightly larger rivet heads, deliberate, I can get small ones, Bump. as you can see this will stand it off and help protect it even more, let's bring it round, I hope you can still see, I'm just going to check you can still see, I don't want you to miss this. Are you alright with that angle? Do you want to go up a bit? Answers on a postcard, please. Let's bring you in that little bit closer. Where are we? It's all an optical illusion up here. Under the light bench cleared. Next bracket going on. Seems to be the right bracket for there. Double check again. Yes, that's the one. Clear a little bit of space. Move the heater box slightly forward. Do we get rivet line up or not? Holes are okay, I think. We have to, there's one checking. We have to drill any out. One there needs drilling out. Okay. Uh -huh. It's out. It might be spinning the remnants of an old rivet. A little bit of air to blow that dust out. The brackets do have little line up tabs on them. We should be okay. First one going in. Get ready for recoil. Bang. Both. And both. Exciting times everybody. We told you we'd get this heater box done in quite a quick time, two days so far. <laughs> Woody Woodpecker in it. <laughs> Shut up, idiot. Right, we've got a dealer sticker on as well. Just copied that across from a brochure picture. Later uh, facelift ones use a black label. Early ones, a white label with an over sticker, normally another a date or a number. For my case, I've just used a Motocraft decal. Strictly not 100% 
correct, but in the spirit of things. Luckily, luckily these line up and we've got our reinforcing bracket on the other side. We just need to put the holes into the aluminium reinforcing bracket. Bonded in at the back, as you saw earlier. Don't slip. Oh, okay. I'm just checking again. Yes, you're on. Put my hand in. Yep, you're okay there. Just wanted to make sure. So, as I said, and as you saw, behind here, bonded in, is a little reinforcing plate which stops these from ripping out. Might be an idea on these to put, on this one to put both rivets in in case it tries to twist. Get ready for recoil. Careful now, come on. So back hose support brackets on some cars, overhead valves without servos, use as a radiator hose support bracket or a heater matrix support bracket. In our case, the back hose threads through there. You can see that. The bottom bracket stand it off, give us even more protection. So that's that bit done. So you've got, let me flip the screen. I can see you now. Hold on, let's get you lined up. There you go. You've got your servo support brackets, you've got your bulkhead mounting brackets there. We're ready to put some captives slid over these. We may add a reinforcing aluminium backing piece to this tom because they can snap off. I'll have to give that some thought just for a second. So that's the riveting done. We've got a heater matrix now to get. I shall grab that in a minute. And the heater matrix is wrapped in a foam, sort of edging strip, and then it slides in. We've got a plate to cover and two anodized head screws, black screw heads there to go on. We'll get all those bits and you'll cut to it almost finished by the heater motor which we have to fit the upgrade to. And that's it. That's where we're at. Let's operate the flap. There we go. No problem with that. Rivet's clear. All done. See you in a sec. Some rivets to do. On the lower, mustn't forget those. We'll mark those up. Okay, here's the radiator or the heater matrix. Comes with its own brand new one. Comes with its own, with its own foam pad. This is how we did them. Although I'm sure 
the Ford one was thicker foam than this. It's a good quality uh, webbed type foam at the back. That just fits round it like this. Now I don't know if you double it up or not. I'm not sure if they've made it to double up. But uh, you just wrap it round. And um, it cushions it inside the unit. So round we go, there's enough to do another layer if we want. I just seem to recall Ford's was thicker than this, but we'll double up slightly overlap it, not gonna get all the way around. That's how it went in. It just sits on the foam like that. Obviously stop it rattling. Must admit I would like a little bit more foam on there. Just for extra cushioning. Although it is in plate on, this is stainless steel powder coated, I've just filed a little bit off the top and then that goes in, we do use the putty round here because you lose a lot of air out of this, hold on and bring you up a little bit you lose a lot of air out of those holes a lot of power from the fan blows out of these if you don't put the uh, dum dum putty in there, I'll show you that in a minute this can go in I suppose, but I always would have liked a little bit more foam than that thin but I suppose you don't want to wedge it in as such it isn't going to rattle I'll see if I've got anything else I might just bolster that a little bit I don't know what do you think that's how they were we'll see we're ready to put this in Okay, I found some good stuff. This silver back is actually a type of dynamite material. So this will help pack it out a little bit. Just stop a wobble on it. Can't put it all the way um, round it because it's a bit too thick. But I can put it as a backing plate inside. That would work. So I'm going to attach it to the inside of the heater if we want. Just on the, the back section there. It will go in very nicely indeed. You can just see it there on your screen. It should be all right to fit. I don't think it's going to make it protrude out too far. No, that's still okay. That's actually slightly better. That's much better. I'm not getting as much rattle there. You may get one piece. Um, you may get one piece. Probably lay a piece in either the bottom or the top. I think you'll, you'll get away with that. It's a shame we can't get in both sides, but it's just not going to have it. So we we'll get one in the bottom, or you could put it in the top to stop it getting burned in the top of the heater box. Perhaps would be a better idea because that will heat, heat insulate it as well. So that should now fit just, it'll be a bit of a squeeze in, that's better, I can live with that, it's going in there, oh yeah, oh hell yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about, hold on, our, our light is friendly but it keeps getting in your way, so now just a little bit of this and obviously aluminium back is going to help with the heat, so it won't get too hot on top of here, not that it really does but it's certainly going to help it, the bottom okay, it's too thick on the bottom unless we replaced unless we took that foam off do we prefer this you know you could say it's a million times better than the foam in which case would you remove the foam and try it well that ain't gonna come off I don't think we're doing that let's just let's just keep going while we're ahead let's not try and get too smart so slide that in there nicely and we can get our plate on and we'll get our dum dum putty in and seal it and that's the uh, heater matrix fitted nothing to stop us putting the heater matrix in it's done and out of the way so i'll pop this plate on and i'll go and get that that putty we'll put the screws in the top and the bottom okay okay this is a dum dum i get this from frost automotive and it's just like a, a putty you can use it for this kind of a job 
and I'm trying to think and sealing we might be using it on the back it doesn't set so we can use it on the back of the heater but in this instance I'm popping it round here and this is the correct thing to do it doesn't melt but it creates the airtight seal that you want on those and that's how it should be I mean you might argue it looks aftermarket but I don't think so it is the right way to do it a heck of a lot of air escapes past these heater tubes if not so you can just place that in as you will because we put that backing plate that backing foam strip this uh, silver stuff at the back of the rad it's brought it quite forward to the point where it's quite a nice compressed fit into the uh, housing so it's all locked in very neatly and the front of the rad is actually quite close to this face plate so there's no lot of putty to insert into the cavity if you will it just sort of pushes in a little bit and that is how you do it that's airtight and you still get your hoses on so everything's good well, I'm nearly done with this heated build I hope you've enjoyed the heat build video I've enjoyed doing this it's gone quite well we've had any problems really we've had all the parts luckily prepared and ready anticipating this day and it paid off to plan that so it just meant that the project could just go straight ahead I could video it for you I didn't have any hold ups because I prepared all the stuff for this the matrix was in stock the, the dum dum was in stock that's what it looks like it's on these strips I remember to use it for your wing fixings as well because the wings are unbolted on a cortina so you don't want them glued on you want it with a material that will break apart that's suitable for automotive applications and that is it everything's in but I can tell you from experience the air that you lose out of this when your fans on full power it's quite a lot you do lose some around the edges too and this one's quite a snug fit but you do lose a bit around those edges the plate that tries to escape in the weakest route or the path of least resistance seems the only way there we go we're done we're wrapping we're out of here we'll finish early today on that note tidy up now close that chapter heater build is complete so catch you on the next film that was a nice a nice job we've got some the detailing stickers in we've got these clips there for when we get the motor done we'll cover that separate we've also got the diverter flap valve box to do that fits inside the car with the, the flaps that control the ducting to the screen and to your feet and also there's another control flap in there which I'll explain to you nearer the time I did sh say I was going to show you inside this <laughs> I've put the radiator in or the matrix in but there is a little I'll bring you off the, <coughs> off the tripod now and I'm going to show you a little feature that they've got inside these boxes here we go I just want to show you how they control the temperature by that flap going across that way all the air goes through the matrix you can just see the matrix if we pop inside there it is but to get it so it's warm air the flap starts to go that way and then cold air there's a chamber at the back here that goes to the hot air outlet and mixes hot and cold together so when that's on halfway point there for warm you've got half the airflow going through the matrix and the other half goes through a little escape channel around the back and then down to where the hot air normally goes at the same time you can still get fresh air coming through the little fresh air ducting circle that you see so when it's on halfway you've got some hot, some air going through the matrix some going in a little tunnel at the back and some going down the circular hole 
to the face vent. So mid position is everybody sort of warm air uh, and cold air to the face. In fact, it doesn't really affect your face because it's only a small surface area covering the hole. If you see, it's dividing the hole in half, the circular hole down that way. That's straight to your face vents, nowhere else it goes. So you've always got it on full. It never cuts off the fresh air. It's just it, the most it can ever do is half cover it, but that's full heat and then. All the other way, way across is full cold. I can't get it. Uh, full cold in the face as well. So all your cold air goes through that ducting at the back. That's how it mixes a combination of hot and cold to your feet and to the screen. And that's that. There's some other flaps. There's two more diverter flaps which are in the distribution box that's inside the car. We're going to be building that next on the next film. But for now, we're done there. Squeaky squeak. Step back and look at the finished article. And we all agree. It's a nice piece of kit. All done. Details all on it. Detailing sticker underneath. You can see that label there. Copied across from this one. Look how they did it. That one has that label there. This is actually damaged, this heater box, the flap's gone in it. The rod's pulled out and corroded away. This one will need breaking apart to fix. It's in a, it needs a, a helping hand. Oh, the dum-dum also goes around this lip. We'll better put a ring of that on. Here we go again then. Squeak. Uh, it's prudent to put a layer of our sealant round this face now as well, ready to receive the fan plate when it's done. I'll cover the fan in the video that's got the diverter box and a few other things. We're getting the, the bits together for the diverter box now, starting to get a kit of parts ready for that. But that concludes us. Hope you've enjoyed. Nice heater box, salvaged. Uh, all the detailing done. They're all the rivets in copied across as close as we can get and that's it this sticker on the later ones was black on the early ones was white might be a little large I think maybe it was more, more about that size I've only ever seen one still intact on a heater box they put them in different positions they never put them on straight sometimes they were there other times there but they're always on you can see in the early brochure pictures but they probably peeled off in no time I would have thought okay Thanks for all the views, comments, and I um, hope you enjoyed this heater box video. Catch you on the next one. Tech videos. This isn't really a tech video, now this is part of the build. So episode 34, um, heater build, and also other stuff. I don't know what I'm going to mix in this episode, but you're out of the clear, and the tech stuff is packed away. As we say goodbye to our electronics department, it's now closed. Close it up, all the, all the components locked up away in there. We'll mark that up, electronics build box and we can start getting other stuff ready the heat flaps are around somewhere they're waiting in the wings there over there clear this stuff away now there's outgoing parts done pedal box uh, wiper foot operated wiper pump and the um, accelerator and the wiper motor is in that that's to be stored ready for when the car's back see you sorry I just lost you on that clip the battery went We'll see you soon. Thanks for everything you've done on YouTube and Patreon. Always appreciated it. Always appreciate it. I'll just put this strip around that circumference there. We're, we're good to go. Speak again. Light on. One more time. Over and out. Heat the box. Done. Okay, welcome back to this next instalment of the restoration film where we promised you we left off with a heater box, we promised you we'd do the lower heater box, the divert control box. This sends air to your feet or to the screen or both. 
and it receives its air input from the heater box that we just refurbed. So I'm going to drill all these rivets out and drop this in the sink. Let's get this over to the sink. I won't film uh, drilling out the rivets. We'll just strip this straight to the sink for a wash down and let's get it back on the bench cleaned down and stripped. Okay, and welcome to this backwards. Welcome to this next part of the resto build. I promised you we'd do the lower heater box, the sort of divert box, the the um, what would you call this? Heater divert box. Screen vents and foot vents or floor floor vents, floor ducting, screen ducting. It's a little um, diverting box which just controls the flow to the screen or to the feet. That's all it does. We're going to talk through that now. Brambles here and the rivets have been drilled. All the bits pulled off it. Give us this. Okay, with that stripped down and the rivets drilled, I didn't want to show that. There's just some rivet drilling going on. Get the two halves of it into some soapy water, just give it a wash and a one two, a buckle motion, toothbrush and some scrubbing bits and bobs in the sink when the wife's out. Lovely stuff because I never do the washing up. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> hey! Let the cats eat them plates. Nah, only kidding. Kitty cats get really better food than I do. Right, let's wash these down. We'll take them back and then start reassembling this. So it was a quick strip down of it the uh, divert box and then just wash these down no need to treat or paint these they're going to be clean nothing really ever happens to these right let's go back let's dry those down and get back on the assembly bench here we go well i've got some sort of i've got some sort of scratch damage on this it's been has been uh, sort of around the houses a little bit and there was a lot of brambles ripped that we ripped out from underneath the car and some of them have scratched it some may have got done just when it was stored I was reasonably careful with it, but I've decided to give it uh, a clean up and a freshen up with some bumper paint. But before I do that, I've gone over with uh, obviously in the sink and then some foam cleaner, then some IPA solvent, and then just bumper preparation just to degrease it finally. And then we're going to go in and just dust it in. It'll give it a new, fresh paint smell inside as well. So a little bit more cleaning up with a toothbrush just to get the nooks and crannies and then we'll um, we'll dust that in. We're done this side, it does come up better, just gives it a little bit more of a universal appeal and smells nice and that's bumper preparation and plastic bumper paint tends to be keying into this all right so we're good to go there so a quick freshen up on this heater ducting divert box. Right, let's dust that in. Carry on going round that and just get that nice. And I say with the bumper preparation spray, it uh, adheres nicely. Okay, these were powder coated, these flaps. Uh, this is an advanced set, so that that's not Bramble's actual flap, those two parts. Because I didn't want to separate out the heater box till the last minute, so I didn't lose anything and I didn't lose how it all goes together. We must have had some stuff in the past these were found and used as was this bracket here it was already done in advance and some of the locking arms so a couple of items we already had in stock which were clean and rust free or at least they must have been pretty good and they've gone in on that last gal trip an advanced set of parts knowing that when I stripped this and just drilled all those rivets before that we wouldn't lose um, how everything went together we kept it up until the last minute obviously I've just photographed it now but also these were stripped down shot blasted and powder coated much earlier on when we did the powder coating trip otherwise I would have had to strip the heater box for the powder coating trip and may have lost some stuff plus these were in good order I weren't sure what brambles were like as it happens brambles are actually perfect as well but it's irrelevant really We've got good um, parts here to use. We're going to cover these now in the neoprene foam so that they don't rattle and bounce. Uh, so we're going to do that. We just put the foam straight over both sides and then they slot in and we'll see those turning shortly. 
when we put it all back together. This needs riveting before you put the two halves together because the rivets fit from the inside out. So we need to get this riveted into this nicely finished box now. It looks pretty good. That plastic paint's really done a treat. It gives just the right finish. It's freshened it up. Okay, under the lights, freshened it up. It's gonna, ah, it's gonna give it a nice uh, new car smell. You know that. Now you can see my cable here unplugged in because we keep getting flat batteries. Okay, let's get the neoprene foam fitted to these diverter flaps now, please. Going good. Okay, let's just measure this up. Roll back there. We want the down. Roll it down. We want there. Just about with this because it's waterproof the the actual backing piece I could have done it on the other side I suppose do we need scissors or do we need scissors yes we do off screen for you I'm going to preheat the metal as well just to give it even better adhesion so nice to cut this stuff get yourself a decent set of cutters of scissors and they'll last your lifetime these are good ones that I've got here one little piece really could have carried on that cut there but um, still doesn't look quite parallel to me why not why is not parallel I think we're okay check for clearance a wrong way around yeah, we've got clearance. Preheat. Might be prudent to degrease, we may as well. We've got it on board, you never know what poor prints have been on this warm and degreased another little bit that's all that needs really okie dokie it's good stuff this I think this is 3mm neoprene backed. Please tell me it's waterproof. If there's water coming in here, something's wrong anyway. But Damp air. It's sellotape. End of sellotape. On the roll time, can you find the end of the cell tape? Okay, it's very sticky. This stuff it does not come off once it's on. I'm telling you. Whoa, it's even sticking to my fingers. Pretty good. Okay, we're on there. Other side. I'll do both sides. I won't do any harm to do both sides. Why, oh why, oh why did you not just continue your cut? Do you know what? I'm, I know why, oh why I didn't continue my cut because it's slightly narrow. Doesn't have to be exact, you know. We may as well get it right. So you are just losing a bit there. And it's going off site. I'm just looking a bit parallel on my left hand side, that's all I'm doing. Nothing nothing complicated about that. We may as well get it right, mightn't we? If I cut that wrong you'd be OCD on me, wouldn't you? Well, tell me I did cut it wrong. 
it's okay. It's within our limits. The hardest part. It's fair. it even sticks well to its own backing material. Because that's the known quantity you'll start at the top. It's that good at sticking, it even reproduces the ridges. That's nice now. Right, so we've got one done. And I'll say that, that goes in here. And that makes that cushion effect. It doesn't make that loud slam. Which is what you wanted. So that's that bit. Same on this one. Uh, we're going to put that out of the way. Ha ha! I have to do two sections on this because we're running out. I thought I had enough of this stuff. Oh, whoa! We've got one just the right length there. The other side won't be, but this will. two pieces but how much I can do about that I strip there and then we're done sorry that we've got to put two pieces on but this is all I've got okay ready to go on preheat leave you leave me with this no point watching anymore it's like play school this okay then it's all gonna go back together we'll get some rivets on this plate as well we'll cut to that rivets go on just using me long on the rivet gun just to get in you know it's coming oh. <laughs> yeah. hey. exciting times Always, always and forever, baby. Always and forever. Will we go in? Has he got the right rivet under? Should have. find some rivets these aren't the right ones we are locked on and looking good so a little bit of compressed air now on this heater box it's nearly it's divert box now what you've got to do fixing that bracket on there riveting from the inside got to just take a bit off the head head of the rivets and then I've just repainted it back in reason take the head off the rivets because they use a special recess rivet but you don't really need it as long as you grind not too much off the heads. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna so <laughs> the off screen just ever so slightly. I'll be I'll be I'll be right back. As Tom Hanks said, I'll, I'll be right back. Well Sam. Okay. I'm just gonna give it a little bit. Now 
here we go for these divert flaps. A little bit of grease went on there. Now we just fit that. that that's how that one goes. And then we get the other one on. Then we're going to put the two halves together. Again, there. the long rod which you have to clean up if you're powder coated. Otherwise the shaft won't fit in the diameter needed. In it goes, and that's that one. Looks like they clear. What we'll do is just run a grease over there, just in case. Won't do any harm. Oh, harm, 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 harm for that. There's some iron for. There's some aluminium filings in this. From when I've just ground the rivet heads off, we shall attempt to that with compressed air in a second. Just greasing up these ends only a little bit. Why not? Now you've got to get these two to go together. And as Gary Glitter said, let's get together again. Hmm, yeah, right. Say no more. Can you get it? Well, he just. Whoa! A bubble bumbo! Wow, 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 wow. They just slotted together. Didn't have to guide the flaps in there. Now you'll see the rivet, all the rivet holes come into line. And that really is almost done. There's a little, what I call a splitter, which splits the air to the left and right to the passenger and the driver's foot. Well, that splitter fits in here, but we've got to just drill out the remainder of the rivets that are in it, or pull them out, extract these where I've ground them off, either push them or pull them out somehow. They just got left in. I don't know if we'll get those that way or not. Not with that tool we want, anyway. Need to grip them. Do you know what I'll use for those side cutters just to grab the edges? It's a bit naughty. We shouldn't really do it. But they work. They just because they they're able to get that. Get in there. Right, we're all alright. So the splitter can go in. Splitter just slots in, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. This way. And then across for the splitter. Actually, you could put that in at any moment, I suppose. It's not really a big deal. And then it's a case now riveting everything back together. Taking your pick of which rivet you want to use, different sizes available to suit what we've got here. Don't really know. I think for this centre one. It's a larger rivet than these, these outer two were small rivets and little baby rivets on the outer part. I need to go down a size on the I'm gonna go down a size with two big there. Smallish rivets on that. Uh, let's see. Which one suits? The middle one suits. Middle one locked in. Need a spanner to get that out. We're going to change these. We're going to place the rivets in. Um, we can do whatever we want. There's no particular order. One, two, three, about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or so rivets. And then this goes back. That all becomes one piece again. And we can see what it's going to look like. I'll talk you through how the air works once we've got it locked down and safe okay okay i'm going to carry on riveting this together at diverter box some of the larger rivets going in now that's something nice let's just check our diverter flaps are working before we get these smaller rivets in easy to move you can tell straight away turn it with your fingers and you're good to go right we just need to change adapters because there's a couple of small rivets there it's the middle one I want god I don't want to be crude right because we've put the cushion in on listen to the sound that's what you want that kind of sound 
you don't want a plastic or metal metallic sound you want it to sound excuse the pun but you want it to sound like that don't need that clip we'll get that later okay two flaps when you turn your heater motor to the off position not only does the slider activate the contact of the electrical motor inside your face of your dash but a cable also comes off that same motor speed control lever and closes this right so when I turn off the heater this flap shuts and the air coming out of the air box is hitting a dead end so it does not it doesn't go to your face vent and it doesn't go to your feet it goes nowhere but it builds the back pressure up then and all the remaining power is free to go through your fresh air vent. That's why when you turn your heater all the way off, this closes, right? So now full power is available for all the air to go through the fresh air vents because your fresh air vent is still open at the top. It's always open. So heater off, so your motor switches off, so there is no motor anymore. It's going down position full speeds there, slow speeds about halfway and then off is closed completely on the motor lever. So motor lever on off, position one, half speed motor, that would be about there. Position three, full speed motor, that would be fully open. So you get loads of air coming in, presumably it's going to be hot because you've put it onto the hot, so, well it wouldn't have to be, could be cold air coming through because the other lever is the hot lever. I'm only now talking about the motor speed lever which if you look at the front of the dash you're going to think that lever is just to turn the motor off and on it isn't it also closes this flap when you turn the motor off so no air is going to the vents or the screen or your feet it is still going to the vents because the vents have a separate circular ducting outlet in the heater box we showed you that if you've not seen it look at the heater box video and you can see that there's two outlets of the heater box a square outlet which is the hot air warm air outlet to the feet and screen and the circular outlet of the heater box goes directly to the fresh air vents you can't turn the fresh air off except by the the flaps on your actual face vents themselves in the dash you can't actually switch it off the hot off the uh, heater box so when I turn off the motor, this shuts and all the power now is available to go blasting through the air vents. But you might say, well, how can it? I've turned the motor, I've turned the electrical motor off. It's closed out and I've turned the electrical motor off. How do I get um, the air blowing? Well, you pull out on the lever of the motor controller and that boost, that puts a full 12 volts straight to the motor. Now, a lot, not a lot of people know, well, sorry, quite a few people don't know that you can turn the lever all the way off to the right on a Mark III uh, pre-facelift. I think it's to the left on a facelift because they flip the controls around. But you pull it towards you and because this is shut and you've pulled that lever, it allows it to come out almost, you know, pulling away from the dash. It's locked in any other position, but as soon as you get to the far end, there's a slot cut out in the metal and it allows you to pull it. At the same time, it activates the 12 volt contact directly to the motor so the motor comes on full power and because this is closed because it's all the way to the right on the mechanical linkage and the electrical contacts have now made as you've pulled it out towards you that circular vent for the fresh air vents that's always open now is getting blasted with with a much more air because this is shut so you're, you're getting loads more power and you're on full 12 volts so open your little vents on the dash itself and the, on the slip face vent and you get full fresh air so that's how the that's how the boost control works across to the right that shuts pull out 12 volts full on open your vents if they're, if they're not open and you're off so that's what that that's all that does that's your cut off the other valve in here or flap which we can just about see here diverts air fully to the screen half to the screen, half to your feet, all the way up, fully to your feet. And that's it, that's all that does. So that one's pretty straightforward. 
it's this one that a lot of people don't know what its purpose was and that's uh, it shuts off you can see this is the heater box sits straight on top of here now around there and with everything switched off that is like that that's how it works okay I think we're done there it's making sure we're sealed and you know you're together because that hole lines up it's a little bit splayed that top rivet just blew it out a little bit what I'm going to do I'm going to drill that top rivet now I've finished drilling that top rivet it just popped a little bit when I put that top rivet in but I can fix that nothing else is good that's it so these don't need to go on you have some well you can put the levers on we have some levers here on little grub screws and the cable comes down clamps onto these with these little clasps there's one you put the clasp in lock it in the cable locks in cable connects on the end of there and that that cam arm goes up on the cable into your dash and that's all that's it we can fit them later on although i might just tighten the grub screws up now but you calibrate them in the car you want it so that when you you're doing your lever your levers if you want to be american or levers because there's always a bit of variation that's why these are adjustable you can slide your cable in and out to get this just in the fully closed position it wants to be locked right up against uh, that's the most important one a little point i talked about where you can tune this to your how you like you can get it so that fully closed won't quite close this and you get a little trickle of air to your feet while your fresh air vents are on you can do that i don't think it's designed to do that but that's it because if you if you go that position you lose the boost feature if you go to fully um fully fan speed on you might you might get a blast to your face but then you lose a lot of it through here so I like it where it's just about there, almost shut, but it just allows you to have a little trickle of cold, of hot air to your feet. You can get, don't get me wrong, you can get loads of fresh air to your face and, and loads of hot air to your feet in the, just the normal operating uh, scheme of things. I'm just talking about when it's in the boost position. But really, the boost position, it's, it's kind of like aircon. So really, that, I wouldn't pay too much attention about it. Get yours to fully close. I would say that's what it's designed to do. I have set them sometimes where they just open a little bit because the reason why I like to be on the motorway with a boost switch pulled right towards me even if it's not uh, a hot day so my face is getting blasted and my feet just receiving a little bit of hot air just be, by the fact that doesn't quite shut it's a bit wrong really I don't think they designed it that way and you can always adjust it back because you only have to adjust this cable at the side which you can get under in the passenger footwell and do it but it's one of them, it's up to you. I'm just letting you know you can tweak it a little bit if you want it. If you want cold air to your face, hot air to your feet, it's not a problem, just put it on position three and you'll get it. And you'll just get it, but that'll be full that would be fully open at that point. So you you can't have um, a slow amount of such to your feet and a lot to your uh, face vents without going to the far right hand side position the vent position and having a small gap there that's about it but as it's factory set it's perfect anyway it does work it does do the job you don't really need to do that tweak that i'm talking about the good thing about lining these and um, it's a bit of cushioning it gives them a bit more of a solid feel they don't sound as tinny it's just not a tinny sound anymore whereas if you've got well, it's not the more tinny and they rattle inside not as good this way sounds like a solid device okay other than that rivet that popped see that rivet um pulled on that, that hole needs to be a little bit larger diameter and it cracked it but it's not a problem these don't overlap each other you can see it's almost in line now it looks like they should be totally in but they're not that's actually in exactly the right place i could leave that rivet because it is actually gripping i think it's not worth disturbing it a rubber gasket now gets cut to go around this look because this seals underneath so we need this gasket fitting or we can use the silver foam gasket that we've got the um, sound then in the dynamat type stuff can go on there depends how thick they want that seal to be can't quite remember the thickness of that seal how much they want you to do it how snugly this fits against the bulkhead can't quite recall. I'm going to think that probably this is sufficient. 
that we've got here. I think that's sufficient to do it. I don't really want to go any thicker than that. It'd be sort of like trying to crush it up. So we'll probably do this. I'll cut that, fit that, and we're done with this box. I'm going to get some still shots, and that's about it. We'll move on to another project. Not sure what it'll be yet, but that goes in with a kit of parts. Perfecto. Okay, just cutting the gasket, we've marked it out. I'm just doing some cuts on a uh, self healing pad. You can't draw on this because it's the pen just doesn't uh, draw onto the. Uh, it's hard to cut this stuff actually, it just tends to tear. cut from the other side but I tend to tear there's our gasket to go on okay <clears throat> just give it a little bit more of a factory look and to neaten up that that gasket there we've gone for some heat and waterproof tape it's like a cloth type heat and waterproof stuff and it gives it a better finish as well you can't dig your nail into it and, and mark that uh, rubber it gives it like a really tough facing gasket there and this looks a little bit more factory and a little bit more molded in so i've tidied that up a little bit i think i'm quite happy with that. that's a nice cushioning effect it just feels like a pro gasket like a real deal type thing so we're on if that's a kind of a gray finish that uh, neoprene stuff this gives it a much more matte dark rubber type finish and I've managed to just line it so it's smoother and it's waterproof as well I don't I think this is waterproof I'm sure that it is this closed cell stuff but anyway there you go so everything's on that's completed those clips there two of them is one more I don't clip them on because of the, when the cable's actually connected to it so that is it you've got yourself the completed box for the bottom Nothing else to do, we're going to move on to another job. What do you reckon? Pretty good. Light on. Stand back, hold it back for you, get a better view. Hold on, there you go. Okay, done. Move on to another job. Remember we talked about upgrading the, the fan motor. I've saved you the pain and cut straight to the chase. I'm going to do a little comparison test. Cortina Mark III motor versus Cortina City upgrades. Let's go check it out. Join us on the bench, folks. Rocking and rolling. So, we've done the heater box. We've done them heat events. I'll, I'll take you up to those in a sec. We're all finished and put back together. Just to finish the heat box off, we need a motor. So early ones, fully fiberglass case in there's a nice original one that's been uh, refurbed and repaired. I'm going to just power that up now, if I can get the cables to reach. I'll just show you some electricity on to this, just about get our crop clips on. Whoa! Okay, so... Yeah! Oh, there's a, your normal droney noise from your Cortina fan. For what it is, it's not bad, you know? For what it actually is, I'll give it its due. It's not bad. Puts out a fair bit of force for what it is. But now we go across here. 
we've got a bigger beefier motor installed into a plastic case and you have to use a plastic casing because the fiberglass will never stand the power of this so we grafted in there is a difference on it in that you can see two screw heads at the end instead of the one bolt in the middle that's the only difference visually in the engine bay that you get with my upgraded fan the motor sits into this plastic and bolts through we're going to use some resin to reinforce the inside just in case there's any shake but before we do that let's power it up now I have had this on and you've got to be blooming careful because the thing takes off this is ridiculous it's just takes it's going to blow the heater box apart uh, um, oh sh whoa Oh! Oh my! Ah! That's a monster! Woo! Join us! It's another episode. Blooming at you can it's the, the gyroscopic effect. All I was feeling for there was any vibration, any oh I've hit the camera tripod again. Any vibration or any kind of like shaking or anything like that because you know you've got to make sure that it's balanced. So there wasn't any. So it's sitting parallel into this housing. Now we've adapted it, you see, is we've just we've scooped out the original rib rib, rib reinforcers that held the the smaller motor you can see those ribs there that they're missing on this one and then on the motor we use just took its casing off with the um, croc sander it wasn't much bigger than this and then just just brought it around as a circle and then it sits in where the uh, the ribs were so the ribs are just ground out and in you go so there you've got a, a beefy motor we've um, cleaned the commutator we've cleaned it contact cleaned it and I've just put some free in one. It's got little foam felt uh, greasing pads, um, not greasing pads, you know, oil pads to uh, just to keep it lubricated on the, the bushings. Now we just fit this, now we're happy with the, the performance of it. We just fit this locking washer on there to the top, like this. And that's it, we're done. So we can see how it fits in the housing. It's a shame I haven't got a heater box for you guys and girls, YouTubers and patrons out there because we could have seen it blasting out the heater housing and indeed measured the CFM. In fact, if we want to do that, let's get our measuring machine. Hold on. Okay, are you ready? We've got this uh, wind speed indicator, or anometer, however you want to call it. That just sits there and we'll measure. This is a fresh air duct. Everything else is blocked off, so fresh air duct only. That's blocked off. The exit to the face vents and your feet is blocked off. We just need power. And then it should run all right in this. I'm just trying to remember which one was positive. Probably that one. You can already hear how noisy these things sound. Oh dear. that way. Okay, so this is the correct way round.
Standard Cortina pushing out 11. Hold on, zoom it back out. 11.5 meters a second for the Cortina one. And for the Cortina City Continental Pack upgrade, assuming that it fits, because I've only just positioned the. You know, we've got to, we're going to knock the fan on. A bit further, it's very close fit. Let me just knock that back on. The, I knew it wasn't far enough down because it came with about that much exposed shaft. Hold on. Twenty meters a second. Incredible. It's going to blow you out of the car. That. Boom. I'll just show you a towel, see, because towels are quite heavy. So, have a look at blasting a towel. Let's put the towel over it and just see what we get. A bit of weight on the towel. Ready? Are you ready? Okay, that heat of motor test was great. Loads of power, 20 meters a second there. Almost double power of a Cortina Mark III, four and five motor. So we're done with that. We can box out of the way. I've screwed that motor housing in. You can just see it there. Screwed into the casing of the newly refurbed heater box and top clips on. Ready to move on to another job. Not sure what it'll be yet. I'm gonna close the video now on a good note. Another quick tidy up and we're good to go. So we'll see you in episode 35 or 36 if this is episode 35 and I've got it wrong like I usually do. Thanks for all the comments and the subscriptions. Hope I managed to reply. I'll go through some people I've not had a chance to scroll down. Reply. I will get a reply into you. Apologies if I'm late. Don't forget about Patreon. That's where we're all hanging out. We've got another plenty load of stuff to film for you. I've got uh, TC at the NEC barn find section in March. If you want to go along to that, we'll see you in March at the NEC classic restoration show. I think it's the 25, 26, 27, but just Google that and check. NEC March 2020 barn find section. You'll see, hopefully, if all goes to plan, TC the estate car in at the barn find section. I'll be there to say hello to you as well. Look forward to seeing you there at the NEC in March. But we'll probably have another video out before then, of course. We will in February, a couple out in then. But we'll keep mentioning it over and out, PC. Cortina City.